This is Bazaar Morning Call. Broadcasting live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswal Studios in Mumbai. Hello and welcome to Bazaar Morning Call live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswal Studios. It's a Friday morning. I should say thank God it's Friday. I'm Prashant. With me, my colleague Sonia and Nigel. Guys, hi. Good morning. Good morning. Why are you feeling like that? It's, a, it's been a long week, has it not? Every week is a long <laughs> week. Right? And, uh, only three, done, uh, three weeks done in 2023 so far. But, I mean, it's going to be a long day as well before we can say thank but, you, goodbye. But, but that's good news. Next week, I think we have one day off, right? Oh, 26 Jack. It's a yes. truncated ah, week, guys. Nice. Nice. A little shorter. Best but results that. will be pouring in thick and fast. So Absolutely. That nullifies some But good of news, Nigel. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> you know, all right. Uh, do we have good news for markets per se? Uh, I'm not very sure because uh, US uh, markets were down uh, once again. By the way, the market is, if you just look back at the daily changes for the last many sessions, actually all through this year, we're still battling the ranges, right? Uh, the lower end is uh, still holding. The upper end has not been taken out. Despite the promise of uh, the market rally that we saw earlier this week, two days we had those uh, triple-digit gains and then it's kind of fizzled out. Uh, will Can we kind of start, sort of start to come back up against? If you go with uh, US market action, it's not looking very encouraging. So the S&P 500, for example, lost again. I mean, three quarters of a percent lower. The Nasdaq was down uh, a little bit more. Uh, if you look at the dollar market, it's still weak, which is good news for emerging markets. Oil is not kind of jumping up to... It's still high as compared to where it was uh, on the 31st of December last year. Uh, so it's moved up, but uh, it's not galloping higher. Uh, rates are very comfortable. The US 10-year is at about 3.4. Uh, and uh, it's getting a bit of a muddle now, right? I mean, you look at the data which is coming through. You look at the commentary which is coming through. Uh, you know, good news was bad news. Bad news is good news. It's We are... It's going to be a muddled kind of a picture because, and, and that's the way it always is, right? So you had the uh, the, weekly, the jobless claims number yesterday, which indicated that uh, the labor market in the U.S. is still very tight. Uh, now, uh, that is good news because if you're worried about recession, this shows that, I mean, the labor market is still strong. There's demand for workers, right? But that kind of raises the question marks about the Fed's terminal rate. How much more does the Fed have to do? But you had top Fed officials yesterday uh, saying, and actually in a, in all but confirming that, in February, it will not be a 50 basis point hike, but a 25 basis point hike. So, you know, the expectation that uh, it's going to be 25, maybe one, maybe two, maybe three, depends on who you ask, uh, but it's going to be 25. It's not going to be bigger. So that aggressive, very sharp 50 basis point, 75, that is now a story of 2022. Uh, but as I said, I think uh, because, you know, data is uh, incoming and uh, I think on the 1st of Feb, we get the labor, the, uh, the new jobs data, the labor market data, the big jobs number, and I think we'll get a better sense of what, uh, how this is looking. The labor market, of course, is one of the top indicators for the Fed still. Earnings here, I'll come to uh, Nifty and Bank Nifty levels, etc., but earnings here are also not giving a very comfortable picture. You look at Asian pains, you look at numbers from Havels, uh, they are definitely indicating some amount of consumer slowdown. We'll talk about these in a bit from now. Asian pains did see a sharp reaction downwards. Uh, technically, it is not looking very good. Uh, there are earnings cuts as well, by the way, for both F524 and F525, and Havels also is not a very strong set of numbers. Uh, uh, it's actually in line, uh, subpar. Uh, you uh, also had uh, HUL numbers which came through. Uh, there, the problem is the numbers are decent, right? 5% volume growth, but there is the, this royalty increase which the parent has imposed, and that may be uh, negative sentiment-wise. Uh, but I don't think it should be a huge deal, and that's something we'll talk about again. But the point is, there is no clear momentum on the upside on, uh, on the back of earnings uh, as well. And these are big companies, big stocks we are talking about. So let's get to the Nifty levels, right? On the Nifty, uh, it's got resistance at uh, the two levels, 38.2 and 50% retracement levels. Uh, the 38% retracement is 18,191, which we almost got to day before yesterday and then sold off. And the 50% then above that is 18,324. Those are the two numbers, uh, respectively, the 38 and the 50%. Uh, you've got, uh, you know, 17,583, which is uh, the low a few days back, which is uh, which is important. It should be held uh, on the way down. Bank Nifty, uh, you know, uh, uh, for the second straight session, turned down from the 20-day moving average. The 20-day is at 42,554. I think the high today, yesterday was about 42,500, five something. So we almost got to that. Day before yesterday, we touched that and uh, sort of 
uh, fell. And yesterday also, we almost got to it and then fell. So that's the level to take out for the Bank Nifty on the way up. We've been putting out levels on the downside uh, over the last many sessions. So those kind of fold. So a bit of a muddle, I said, and still battling the ranges. That's the uh, story of the market so far. Guys, hi. Absolutely. I think that's the key word, right? The range. This yeah. Nifty is so range-bound between 17,800 and 18,200. There is no reason for the range to break either way. And that's the sense you're getting in the market as well. Even this morning, the SGX Nifty is absolutely flat, an indication that perhaps we may open sideways. Uh, the good part is that FIIs after, I think, 19 days, excluding the, the day when you had the Samvardhan block on 17th, after 19 days, FIIs are finally bought in the cash markets to the tune of around 400 crores. Uh, so that's important. And the Nifty has given all the global cues. The Nifty has held, down, held on to 18,100. Now, there are a lot of factors. The focus is going to shift on to earnings because you have Reliance that comes out uh, later in the evening. Over there, there is a moderation that we're expecting this time in the consumer-facing businesses, both geo and retail, so that's important. Through the course of the weekend, you have ICICI Bank and Kotak Mahindra Bank tomorrow. There's Axis Bank on Monday. So the focus will now shift squarely onto some of these large earnings. If there is any major disappointment, then the market may tread further to its lower end of the trading range. Now, because of the weak handover from the US, the market today may see a lid on its gain. So the Dow is down quite a bit. In fact, this week, the Dow is down almost 4%. And it's the worst week since the month of, month of September. So coming back, uh, the resistance on the upside is 18,200 to 18,250. On the downside, the support is 17,800. And the market could perhaps continue to gravitate within that range. We just have seven sessions left before the budget. Of course, the budget is just a financial statement. So it's generally not very market moving. Yes. But that's another big event to watch out for. Well, Sonia, a couple of uh, comments first on the institutional flows. Uh, this week itself, the FI as well, the net sell numbers come down to a paltry 100 crores. Or Remember last week, they were averaging, averaging closer around 1,900 to 2,000 crores per day. So that's a positive. In trade yesterday, well, the FI is that the number looked quite good, but the DI participation was much lower. It was 20% lower than the average that we've seen. In fact, yesterday, the participation from the DI, DIs was as much as what we saw on January 2nd. So just keep that in mind. Uh, in the FNO market, well, yesterday, there was uh, some unwinding of positions. So you did see that the open interest of the Nifty did come in lower. What did the FIs do? They added some mild shots and they uh, unwound some long. So the long short positioning now is at around 50% apiece. The options data is quite interesting. It seems that pre-positioning ahead of the budget in case there are some murmurs in case there are some expectations, some punt buying on both sides, the call and the put side. But the more important data is what's happening on the writing side. So the 18,000 put that was active yesterday, the premium is around 60 rupees. And also the 18,200 call, the premium out there is around 60 rupees and that as well was equally active. Which brings us to the levels then. On a closing basis, you want the Nifty to defend the 20 DMA. If the 20 DMA gets broken, then maybe, in fact, we go back to around that 100 uh, DMA odd. But if we can end higher today, you know, and, and defend those lower levels, then it gives us a chance to try to move to higher levels, which come in at around the 50 DMA. That's around 18,300, which I expect stiff resistance at those levels. So the support range, 18,000, 18,030, going by the options data, and resistance, 18,200, 18,250. The Nifty Bank, every time it's trying to attempt to go to around 42,600 odd, it's seeing some resistance. And that's where the 20 DM is. So we'll need the Nifty Bank to cross that level to give it a fighting chance to go to fresh all-time highs. Will the IT index that's been outperforming till now, will it take a bit of a breather? A couple of those mid-cap names, whether it's Emphasis, they reported a degrowth on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, one of the few IT companies uh, to report that. Will uh, you know that uh, stop the IT uh, stocks in its path? And uh, LNT Tech as well, they've cut their revenue guidance to the lower end out there. So till now we had that the IT index was doing a relative outperformance. Will it pause for breath? That's going to be important because that's been holding one end up. HGX if we suggest a start in the green. I think we pull back a little bit at some point of time. And maybe in fact with that 18,030 level holds up, then risk reward could be favorable. Sonia. Okay, well, uh, there's lots happening on the show later today. So before we start, let me tell you what's lined up in the first half hour of the show. We'll get you updates from the markets across the globe. Mark Matthews of Bank Julius Baer and company will be joining us to discuss the global trade setup. Later, our research team will bring you CNBC TV 18's list of top 10 stocks for the day. At around 8.30, we will do a fundamental stock analysis with Amisha Bora of Prabhuda Ladar. So do stay tuned in for that. But first up, let's get you some more cues from the Lal Street on the 